Hi, my name is João Palmeiro, I'm a data viz engineer at Feedseye, and today I'm going to present our work on supporting visual investigation of data distribution shifts. In this way, we'll start by checking the context by the, uh, for this work, then we'll look into the interface that we are proposing here, data shift, and finally we'll see some considerations about implementation, expert feedback, and future work. First of all, let's meet Antonio. Antonio currently lives in Lisbon and he is now a data scientist working on fraud detection at a fintech company. For doing his job, he has a set of core needs, like for example, checking for data distribution shifts in the training, test and the current sets. Associating with them, there are a couple of frustrations, like whenever a model performance goes down, he needs to manually identify upstream problems, like in the data, for example, and when comparing multiple distributions, he finds the process cumbersome, also because there is no standardized way to do it right now. So, before going into data shift and presenting you the interface, let's first see what data distribution shift is. It isn't likely that the distribution of the real world data, the data that is entering in our systems, is the same as the one that we use to train our machine learning models. The world is not stationary and things change. For example, new buying patterns appearing and disappearing. However, what might appear to be a shift can be caused by internal errors or data quality issues. One of the things that I, I find more important to keep in mind is that these changes in the data are problematic even for working models because its association with performance degradation over time in our machine learning models. In this specific work, we are focusing on one of uh, data distribution shift types where what is changing are the input features, but for a given input, the, uh, the output is the same. So let's imagine that we have this training data on the left with photos of dogs and cats for a classifier, but on the right, as our test set, we, we still have dogs and cats, but with different representations like weight drawings. In this way, data shift relies on an algorithm that calculates if a feature distribution has significantly diverged from a reference one, typically the training one. Uh, it uses hypothesis testing to check if the difference between distributions is significant or not. In practical terms, data shift is the interface for the user to analyze the p-values of these tests over time and for all features. And for all features to be comparable with the same alarm threshold, we normalize them. For this presentation, let's keep in mind that what is really important to consider is that we have a divergence metric between distributions whose small values mean changes in the data. And now let's check our process and some related work that we followed to design data shift. First, we conducted four semi-structured interviews at Feedseye with uh, different um, data scientists working on several projects. Feedseye is a fintech company working on a risk management platform and one of the use cases is fraud detection. So, in this, um, together, we identified correct, correct current data monitoring and distribution analysis practices, triggers for these processes and also some pain points. Some of the insights that we got are related to feature distribution comparison being done considering the most recent time window with the historical data set and also the usage of charts and summary statistics in Jupyter notebooks or spreadsheets that are prepared for that specific purpose and moment. In this way, we want to support a, a flow that, that consists of five main parts from data preparation, overview profiling, to knowledge management and root cause analysis. In simplified terms, what we want to support it is, is this flow, starting with preparing the data, get an overview of the shift in the data, then depending if there's a feature that we already want to check or not, we'll check that specific feature or we'll identify alarming and shifting features, then categorizing shift, shift patterns, comparing related features, and from this, this point, we will start focus on identifying features for further investigation, analyzing 
feature distributions over time in this way to try to identify measure differences and at the end hopefully we'll have sufficient information to act to tackle downstream problems. Data scientists, as we identified, need to quickly generate hypotheses and decide the next steps to ensure that model performance is not affected by data distribution shifts or data quality issues. So we settled five requirements. As the number one, we have identified and compared data distribution shift patterns. As the number two, identify relevant features and periods. Three, compare related features. Four, identify the main changing values in the distributions of the features. And finally, we want to integrate this solution with the current workflow of data scientists. In the related work, one of the key t takeaways that we took is that as part of machine learning systems, visual analytics for data distribution shift is an underexplored field. Nevertheless, there are some interesting and closer solution to ours like data shift explorer and clustergram and some open source packages that have visual visualization capabilities for this type of analysis, namely, evidently, an ML run. However, none of them provide a machine learning oriented workflow for analyzing data distribution shifts over time, considering different levels of detail and interactivity and that are integrated with JupyterLab and Python, some of the most used tools by our data scientists. And now let's see the interface and what people use to analyze data distribution shifts. The first image that appears is an overview of all p-values for all features. Each feature corresponds to one row in this heat map, considering different moments in time, different dates, for example, that are the columns here. This heat map can be huge. So for example, here we, we, here we are just seeing 20, but we can have almost 300 features in a, in a typical case. And in this way, we have some things at the top to help us uh, rearrange the layout of this heat map and also to filter the data that we are seeing in a moment. This data, uh, we are mapping it, the p-values, we are mapping it to, to a, um, um, a, color, a color scale where black means that something is significantly d d different, so it's alarming, let's say, and the um, yellow, orange, red sequential color scheme is helping us trying to see the patterns of p-values changing over time to be, for example, closer to this alarm threshold. If values are above, in this case, 25, they are colored in a, with a, a gray color because they are not that important for the uh, analysis in this case. And why we decided to have this tripartite color scale? So for the same data, we can see it uh, in the left. If we consider to use the, um, the, the sequential color scheme considering all the, the, the range, or we can see it like in the right as we implemented. We noticed that uh, if we try to map all the range of values to the, 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 the color scale, considering the sequential color scheme that we are using, it looks like that everything is broke, that there are a lot of problems with our feature and you really need to act because everything seems to, to be a problem because of this uh, reddish uh, image that appears in, in front of our eyes. However, what is really important is, is that uh, identifying the features that are alarming, that are the, whose distributions are significantly different, training and test, for example, and also the patterns we, for small values, because small values mean that things are changing. And that's why we decide to trim the left part of, of the scale and have this image focusing on the lowest values so people can take can really take insights about what's happening with the features. Then, really at the top, we have some widgets. The features are allowed to select and, uh, and select uh, dif different ones and also to search for a specific one. So, for example, we instead of looking at 500 features, we can look just to uh, these five, if are the ones that are really interesting, for example. Then we can sort the y-axis of the heat map where, where are the features considering different criteria. By default, it follows the original order, but we can order them by most alarms, or for example, list some of p-values. In this way, we can 
uh, notice some features that are not alarming, but the distributions start to, to be really different over time. Then we can rearrange the layout to first see the raw features and then the engineering ones, the ones that are created based on raw features or even uh, in another uh, set of engineered features. If we over over um, one of these squares, we can also see a tooltip to see the specific value for the specific p value for that square. So in this case, we have uh, more or less three. After having an overview and getting an overview of what's happening on all our features, we can left click on one of, on of, a, one of them and start an investigation. And by investigation, what do you really mean is that we are focusing our analysis on that specific feature, in this case, the number 29, and we'll not only see that specific feature here isolated, but also all the related features. So features that were used to create this one or and or uh, that, uh, that is one of the, the feature that is being used to create another ones. In this case, we have some feature descendants. So this feature, number 29, is being used to create all of these features. And in this way, we can compare things that are related. We can also add other features to the analysis, uh, for example, feature number 25. And at the bottom, regarding the related features, we can see all of them are the ones that are in common between the features that we are investigation, investigate. After uh, identifying features that we want to know more, to see the major difference that are happening in the distributions. We can go to the second visualization of data shift, the histogram, and plot um, the, distribution, the distributions, considering the reference and the current ones uh, in, the, in this chart. At the top, we can select the specific moment in time that we want to, 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 to check the, the differences. Then we have a legend that we identify the, the reference distribution and the target distribution, the current one. And also we have this uh, notion of stability here because even in, in the reference period, the distribution can be stable. So more or less it's, all the, it's the same distribution over the training period, but it can also change, change a lot during that time. So with this uh, notion of stability, we can more or less uh, um, have a grain of salt to identify the differences that we are seeing hit or not. Uh, here or not and to see if they are really really big changes or if because the stability is not that low that these changes are more or less expected. So as we can see here for a categorical feature this line is the reference distribution and there's a, a big difference here in this in this period because there is no almost no values left for this category and this one is bigger than was in the reference period and we have a lot of new values for this categorical feature. We can change uh, the moment in time that we are seeing in the slider. And we can also see it for continuous features with some differences in, in the, the, the histogram here. We can choose different, different scales for the x's and we also have a, a bucket for no values. And now regarding the technical implementation of data shift. Uh, in data shift is a Python sub package that integrates a larger one that also contains the algorithm that I summarized at the beginning of the presentation. And for data shift to happen, we are leveraging some Python packages like IPython for displaying the chart, embedding the chart on, no on notebooks and pandas as our data frame package. And also some front end technologies from React as our framework and to some packages to design the interface and also the charts. The heat map chart area, because it can have a lot of different elements, is implemented with Canvas to scale, although guides uh, axis, for example, are SVG elements. This approach is similar to, to other works, uh, Pipeline Profiler and Nova, where we are combining a Python API for data scientists to use from Jupyter Notebooks, JavaScript visualizations, and IPython's display to embed the visualizations in the notebook. And now, some feedback that we got from a, uh, a session that we, that we conducted with a, a data scientist following a sync allowed protocol. And with this session, we tried to validate the interface data shift uh, with one of the data scientists that are working on um, e-commerce merchant 
uh, in fraud detection. He was already familiar with the data and the test that we proposed was imagine the situation where a most has passed CISA model was deployed and the goal was to understand if there were there are features that need our uh, uh, his attention and identify them to further analysis. We got some really interesting uh, insights from, from, from this data scientist. For example, he was not expecting um, these, these huge differences in some, in some features. Uh, and he, he says that I don't see a reason why it will be this different. This could suggest that there is an issue with data quality. Uh, for, for the data scientists, the most useful option for identifying shifting features and detecting risks to the model performance was list sum of p-values. Uh, when using the investigation view in the overview chart, he found that this is interesting and makes a lot of sense and helps me understanding other features that can be affected by this shift. Uh, he also mentioning that an engineering feature can be calculated from many features and seeing the p-values of its raw ancestors uh, helps me understand which might be causing this shift. Uh, he also mentioning the color encoding in the slider for the histogram for the second visualization of data shifts. And we also got other insights. So the current one hour workflow took just 20 minutes with data shift uh, in this case although a complete analysis of shif shifting features is still necessary. As future work, uh, we want to conduct more user testing and interviews with users after using data shift in their projects. We want to implement features that are in our backlog that were not considered for this first version. As an example, improve uh, the label truncation, tru truncation on the y-axis and also support screenshotting of the visualization. We want uh, for, ac uh, for accessibility improved support for keyboard navigation and screen readers. We want to explore ways to integrate and visualize individual instances uh, in data shift. And finally, we want to reevaluate um, re implementing data shift as a Jupyter Lab extension using IPy widget as a framework. One of the advantages is that we can synchronize data between Python and front end. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I hope it, you find it uh, useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to go to this link and check the, the paper or email me to uh, this email address here. You can also um, share all your questions right below in the comments. Thank you very much and bye bye.